Hello, and welcome to the 29th episode of the Council of Goatmen. I'm your host, Goatman, and no one else is with me here today. It's all me by myself. Um, I guess this is going to be a pretty different episode. Uh, you know, mainly because no one else here to bounce off my comedy, I suppose. So, uh, and, uh, I don't know, I work better when I'm, uh, bouncing my comedy off other people. Uh, it doesn't, and I hear the response as well, kind of doesn't work. Uh, doing the Markiplier style, kind of making a joke and then looking at the camera and then expecting something. I don't know. I can't. I'm not that guy. Um, I'm more of a Game Grumps guy. I like our Oni plays. Like, bouncing my humor off other people and being to being able to hear that response. Because people have different perspectives, and it's it's nice to hear the sort of humor um, seen in different how how other people take your jokes. How do they run with them? Of course, sometimes you get people who aren't funny. And then it's hard to bounce uh, humor off them. <clears throat> First epi- few episodes of this podcast, cough, cough. Um, episode twenty nine is gonna be different. Um, I want this to be a message, a message to the people that I think need to hear it, and. This could also, if if I die, let this be the episode you listen to. Let this be my, this be my final words, and sort of maybe for those who don't truly know who I, maybe this will give you some insight. So, I. Uh, I'm trying to remember around uh, around what time. I'd say like, uh, I definitely middle school probably propelled it. I, I would say ninth grade, about early ninth grade. Um, I started to have uh, depressing. I started to realize I had depression. I think I had it before. Um, definitely middle school was a time in my life where shit just, I wasn't, I didn't feel like a kid anymore. Um, I sort of lost that part of me. I mean, I was the type of kid who in fifth grade, I saw profanity as, as, you, you know, you can say profanity and sixth grade when i said the word fuck for the first time it was like an explosion going off in my head it was like whoa i said the fuck word but now i say it all the time it I, words are just words and their only power is if you give them power all right and that's why i really hate the whole um retarded argument if i'm gonna be honest listen i get that it's a word you can't say i get it but I get it for kids who are actually retarded, but saying a different word doesn't change the meaning. If you say something with anger in your voice, it's gonna mean the same thing as if you said a different word. Making kids say frick instead of fuck doesn't change what they mean. It, and I never got that. Like, why does frick have less power than fuck? It's just, you're, you're, putting the same meaning into it so the difference really is kind of minuscule um anyway sorry i i got off track with my word talk um what was i talking um okay so okay not i i my my whole thing i suppose i mean since sixth grade i have been trying to, uh, pick up women. I, uh, and I just, I never seemed to be the type to get any, and I, I would say that, 
like I'm e I'm easy to talk to, and I try to talk as much as possible. But when I'm at my lowest, I'm I can't I can't just talk to people who I don't know. Uh, it's it's and meeting new people is hard. And then when you finally meet new people, and you get that rejection, it it hits it hits hard. Um. I know that maybe maybe not just me, but for a lot of people, maybe you see loneliness as something that's invalid. That oh well, what boohoo! I don't have a girlfriend. It's not a big deal uh, to other people, but it is a big deal. It's a big deal to you, and it, frankly, it's been a big deal to me in my life. I everywhere I go, everything I see is couples being happy together and I don't know how to make that happen I I, I just, I'm 18 now and you know I'm looking back on my life and I I did what I could to try and put myself out there I mean, sure, I had my anxiety, I've had my depression, and I became secluded a lot. I mean, I barely came out of my room for most of my life. But, and even at school, at, at recess, I just sat on the swings most of my elementary school life. I don't like people, and I'm gonna get to that. Um, but... I don't know, it was difficult for me. And um when I when I tried to be outgoing, I tried to make friends, I tried to ask girls out. Getting a no after putting so much effort, so much courage into trying to put myself out there just felt like a punch in the gut. And um I let sucked. And it happened again and again and again and I've kept trying and here I am 18 I'm in college and people all around me on all three sides of my dorm room are probably fucking and I'm here alone and um well it sucks alright and for people who think that their loneliness is invalid, it's not, and I'm here to vouch for that. Uh, I think loneliness is one of the worst feelings you can have. And I get, I have my friends, um, which has been slowly dwindling since I've been here. Um, you know, I don't talk to people as often, or sometimes you realize that maybe some of your friends might not actually be your friends. Sometimes you get tired of people, and I don't know. You've been, you can notice that podcast members have been dwindling. I mean, I'm here by myself right now because of that. Right now, um, another. Th but besides my problems, uh, I want to talk about other people's problems. Uh, that that's. I don't like. I don't know if I like the way that sounded coming out, but, um. One of my biggest issues that I've been dealing with, um, especially because I'm the type of guy, I, I don't, I don't care a lot about myself, and that's been really hard. Um, I'm going back to myself, sorry, I'm gonna get to what I was talking about earlier, but my brain kind of just thought of something else while I was trying to say that tangent. Um, I, I don't like myself. I look in the mirror and I don't see myself. And that's not an easy thing to look in a mirror and not see yourself, but see your, see your consciousness trapped inside someone, some, a body that doesn't belong to you. And that thought horrifies me. Um, it, it's like I'm not looking, like it copies my movements, but it, it doesn't 
look like me. And for those who understand that, um, that, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. Like, if you understand that, that's cool, I guess. Uh, I guess you understand. For those who don't, um, I guess I'm glad that you don't have to go through that, but it's not a good feeling. Um, some days I can look in the mirror and be like, that's a handsome fella. Other days I can think, that guy looks like a jerk and I'd punch him in the face. It all just kind of depends um, how, I'm, how I'm feeling, if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. Um, and a lot of it comes down to... Um, uh, I, it, later in... I would say around early middle school, I uh, became a nihilist and a misanthropist. Um, and there's a really um, from oh, I'm trying to my this was I'm I'm trying to remember. I gotta look it up now. Uh, let me. But uh, it was from um. Cole from uh, True Detective uh, is a great quote. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, human consciousness is a tragic misstep in human evolution. We became too self-aware. Nature created an aspect of nature separate from itself. We are creatures that should not exist by natural law. We are things that labor under the illusion of having a self, an accretion of sensory experience and feeling programmed with total assurance that we are each somebody, when in fact everybody is a nobody. Maybe the honorable thing for our species to do is to deny our programming and stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into ex execution, one last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. And... Um... I agree. 100% with that. Um, and I've told my friends this before, with a deadpan face, if I had the power to destroy the human race, I would do it. No hesitation. Um, we have destroyed the earth. Um, people are stupid. And without second thought, I'd get rid of them. And yes, that includes me. That includes the ones I love. Everyone. I don't... I don't like... humans... in, in, in general. Yes, there are good people, and I understand that. I understand there are good people. Um, but overall... In general, I don't like people. Um, I think even the nicest of people, deep down, have um, have a bad side. I mean, even me, I dealt with um, uh, it's not pathological. It was uh, compulsive lying for a long time. Um, I lied about things that didn't need to be lied about or just to make myself feel better um deep down i would have bad intentions i wanted to steal from people i wanted to hurt people um i mean i'd be lying if i said i was a goody two-shoes all the fucking time i was a piece of shit at sometimes um and other times i would say it was my actions were justified but I don't know, sometimes I did just want to be a dick. Um, but at the end of the day, I would say that I try my best, especially now that I've been, that I've matured. I would say I, I try my absolute damnedest to be a good person um, and help those that I love and put myself before others, even when people tell me not to. Um, because I, things that I believe in, um, but at the same time, I also believe that uh, existence is meaningless, which is why it's my life is really hard to deal with. Um, I don't see meaning in a lot of the things that I do, and it pisses a lot of people off. But 
at the end of the day, I think I'm right. Um, it's why it was really hard for me to even get into college because I, I almost failed school because I didn't see the point. I, why work so hard? Why get up in the morning? Why do all these tedious tasks, these menial, meaningless, insignificant things that add nothing to my life and don't make me happy to get to a life that I'm still unhappy with? Eventually, I will die and every memory that I've had will be gone. I will rot. I will be. I. I won't exist anymore. I'll be gone. I won't be anyone. I won't be anything. I won't exist. And all of it will have been for nothing. Nothing will have been gained from me existing. And honestly, I. I, I wish that had been born. I. I really hate the idea of people giving birth. I mean, there's 8 billion people on the planet, and half of those people are, if not more, are starving in the streets, and you're creating more babies? I, I, and I'm sorry if you are a person who has had a child, and it's really hard for me to deal with that, especially for people I love who I know want to have kids, but please just adopt, because I just, I hate, I hate that it feels greedy to me to have a kid. There's, you don't need one. And it's honestly just, one, it's, it's, I feel like it would just worsen your life. But if you really think it'll make you happy, then please adopt. I get wanting to have kids. I've wanted to have, have kids at one point in my life, but I realized that I'd be a terrible father because I'm a depressed human being and my life would be shit. And also, I don't want to... And and also, so giving birth to a child, they, they have experienced so much hatred for my own birth because I wasn't born out of a happy, loving family. I was born into... Um, two people who wanted to have sex and nothing more um, and didn't really love each other and that's how I feel and the idea of tormenting a human with that kind of psychological horror is torture to me and I don't think you should do that to someone like was done to me I don't I never wanted to be born I never wanted to be here and Killing yourself isn't easy. Your body's programmed to keep you alive. And that's why I'm still here, to be honest. it's That's really the only reason I couldn't find the courage to kill myself. And I, I, I am glad that I'm still here. I've made a lot of people happy, and I'm very proud to say that. Um, but at the end of the day, that is why I'm still here. Um... But what I was talking about earlier, I kind of went off on a tangent, but another thing that I'm angry about is um other people's problems, and listen, despite all the shit I've just said, I've had a pretty comfortable life, um, you know, my parents did end up, you know, despite the divorce, were able to make things work as possible, as well as they could, um, for me and my sibling, and, um, uh, they, they, they did try their best, and I can see that, um, and I can respect it, um, a lot of times I felt like I had to choose sides, which definitely was not good, but despite all that, I do feel like after seeing the shit that my friends have gone through, I have had a pretty comfortable life. And I just want to bring some of their problems to light. And I'm not going to name names, but for those of you listening, I think you know who I'm talking about. And I just want you to know that I love you with all my heart. And I hope you get 
what you deserve. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing domestic abuse. I'm tired of seeing pedophilia. I'm tired of seeing people not respect feelings. I'm tired of Christianity, a bastion of falsities, and who push their fucking agenda on other people. And it pisses me off. And to no extent. I... Especially Jehovah's Witnesses, but even getting that out, just regular Christianity, pushing their religion onto other people is sickening. I am a proud Satanist, but I have never once gone up to someone and said that they should be a Satanist. I love my religion, and I love who I am for it. I didn't go into this religion thinking, ah, I just need a religion, I gotta have one. I never, I was an atheist and I didn't care. I, I didn't want a religion. I didn't want religion in my life. Um, but I realized that Satanism had my beliefs at heart, um, promoting creativity and individualism. And that's what I'm all about. And um, accepting one another. And uh, ultimately being an anti-religion to Christianity. And that's what I really loved about it. Um, because fuck Christianity and fuck... And fuck it. I fucking hate it. Um, if you are a Christian, if, listen, if you believe in God, fine. But it ends there. If you believe in the Bible, that's a different story. If you believe in God, I don't care. Good. You're fine in my book. I don't believe in God, but you're entitled to your belief. Um, but if you are a Bible believer... You can go fuck off and die in a ditch with a razor-bladed dildo shoved up your ass because fuck you. Um, yeah. Uh, I, um, I mean, I don't know. I pretty much stated how I feel. Christianity has ruined many of my friends' lives, and quite frankly, I don't fucking appreciate it. Um guess back to me as I only got a few minutes left but uh I want to end this with um that as a um I, I mean I'm happy for anyone whose parents are still together because I know I'm jealous of that I'm jealous that my parents aren't together I mean I'm glad they aren't at the same time they aren't but I wish I had a family that I don't know Kind of was the normal family, but I also don't at the same time because I appreciate who I am because of the divorce. It's a complicated situation. Um, listen, um, on my mom's side has been all right. I've never really been attached to my dad's side. Um, my aunt love her to death. Um, my dad, I've had a lot of issues with, um, not abusive, I mean, not physically, I definitely would say emotionally a little bit, mentally, for sure, um, he has made me afraid of a lot of things, it's why I am who I am, I think it's why I'm such a sensitive person, is because I'm afraid of failure because of him. I'm afraid of not being good enough. Um, and I was forced to like people who I didn't like. I've never been a family person. Um, I know there's people who are like, haha, I don't like Thanksgiving because I gotta see my family. But like, I legit, it's not just, oh, my family is annoying. I legit hate them. I hate them. Of 
grown. As I've matured, I've tried my best to ignore these feelings. And especially now that I'm out of the house and I'm in college, it's a lot easier to ignore those feelings. But when I was living with them, um, there's three specific, more so, I mean, I can get over my half-sisters. Um, I get they were kids. I realize that now. And I had super bad anger issues, so I get that I was probably just... I mean, they're annoying, they're loud, I have misophonia, and... Well, of course, some little kids aren't gonna understand that, and they disrespect... That. And my walls were made of literal bookshelves, so I heard everything. So, it didn't exactly make it easy, uh, to ignore, uh, and you know, but I would say the adults, it's, I say the adults, I can still hold a grudge against, because I still have a lot of ill feelings towards them, uh, constantly barging in while I'm trying to write, especially when I'm trying to write something emotional, like I tried to write poems, or a story about women's rights, and I would have it made fun of uh, by parents, um, or um, having my feelings invalidated, or as my lovely stepmom put it, I would have a razor-bladed dildo shoved up my ass if I worshipped Satan, which is exactly why I'm still doing it, because god damn it, if there is a, if there's one thing that motivates me, it's uh, doing the exact opposite of what my stepmom wants. The second I heard she didn't like Nirvana, I started blasting Nirvana, and I actually found out that I liked a lot of their music. Um, not all of it, but I definitely realized I liked a lot more than just Smells Like Teen Spirit. I, um, uh, but that's besides the point. Um, I never felt validated in anything I tried to do. Um, I, um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot I can talk about on my dad's side of things that, um, really affected me and made me who I am. And, um, a lot of those things I don't like. I don't like that that's who I am. Um, I mean, sure, they pushed me to, to, to be, you know, better, to ignore those invalidations. But at the same time, I'm also now a sensitive, anxious, just ball of anger who can't control his emotions properly because of it. And that has affected my life um, in many ways, my ability to make friends, to talk to people, um, it's, it's not, not great. Um, at the end of the day, I would say that my dad and my stepmom are good people. I would say that, that they are good people. But at the end of the day, I would say that they are not the greatest parents. I don't think they know how to handle children. Um, they certainly didn't know how to handle me. Um, and I'm seeing less than stellar results with my other siblings. Um, unfairness, mental abuse. Um, it's... And I know that a lot of people deal with physical abuse and that's horrible and I one that's horrible um and even that isn't treated well um but I think mentally me mental abuse also deserves uh some of the spotlight um and if you think and and even physical abuse is sometimes ignored um so, you know, mental abuse, which, you know, you can't prove with a bruise or a scar. 
is a lot harder to um to that it doesn't get talked about as much um and it sucks because it's a real thing and it has really affected me um unfortunately i'm kind of out of time uh and i'm already over but i don't know i hope this episode helped you better get to know who i am as a person um and maybe made some people realize that when I say I am who I am, that I'm not joking. I know a lot of people have laughed or outright disbelieved me, thought I was joking when I said I had depression or was an introvert or was a misanthropist or believed in nihilism or was a Satanist. That is who I am. And I'm fucking proud of it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Council of Goatmen. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. And if your parents uh, abuse you in any way, shape, or form, domestically, physically, uh, I don't know why I said domestically, but physically, mentally, socially, Whatever. The point is, if they abuse you in any way, shape, or form, uh, they can go shove a cactus up their ass, um, and shove their penis down a garbage disposal, because fuck people like that, and they deserve nothing less than torturous death. Thank you, and good night.